Though sometimes I'm disappointed by the friends that I hold dear, I refuse to be defeated by the ghosts of doubt and fear. I could think about my weakness, keep my eyes upon the sun, but my help comes from the mountains that bring me close to God. Though this sick old world is reeling, yeah. full of hatred, war, and strife, I'll undertake the house I'm building, face the trash piles of this life. I'm pointing folks to Jesus, for the grave is not the goal. And I'll look up to the mountains, blessed home. Heal the soul. Oh, there's something about a mountain that reaches to the sky that speaks of things eternal, a hope that never dies, like the blessed. I'll just look up to the mountain and keep my trust in Him. This old wilderness holds nothing, and I'm not content to stay, for I see. Milk and honey every day. I'll not let the mighty giants blind my eyes to gain and laugh. There's a mountain to remind me that victory is close at hand. Something about a mountain that reaches to the sky that speaks of things eternal, a hope that never dies, like the blessed rock of ages.
I remember Brother Helm, especially when we moved in Annapolis in the Holiday Inn. He said, uh, the Lord tells me that a number were called here today, but we're incomplete. And he said, we're cut off at the legs. And he showed, he said exactly where the Holy Spirit operated, cut off at the arms. And uh, he showed us where that was. So listen, folks, Jesus wants us to be in the right place at the right time. And Brother Helm said uh, the location was one thing that we ought to be concerned about. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, all Galilee of the Gentiles. But he preached, he, he at first preached uh, in, uh, to the lost, he sought the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But now we find it's open to us and uh, a mountain i love that song i used to hear pastor steve sing it and uh, barry is called upon because he has the quality of voice and that reaches a high f and that's too uh in treble clap that's too high for me in fact i can't sing as I've completed, by the way, last Thursday, my uh, chemo treatments. Thank you for praying for me through. I've had 30 radiation and four sets of chemo, a set consisting of uh, uh, three uh, times they put chemo in me. And I'm glad it's fast. I'm looking the 26th the doctor will put me through a test that will reveal if they stop the cancer and i'm praying with you that it will be eradicated they won't find anything then then let's return to the text then the 11 disciples went to galilee to the mountain where jesus had told him to go now that uh whole roost uh, in the Greek, can be translated hill. Uh -huh. I, I want to encourage all Texans because when I came and heard a three mountain retreat, I couldn't find the three mountains. And someone had to show me and the, the curvature of the three mountains. And uh, Naomi and Richie live on a mountain uh, in the Texas style. But when you come from the Appalachian and then over to the Rockies, you wonder why people call it a mountain. That this could be translated hill, but it's translated mount, mountain scholarly. And, but I want to show you where the same Greek word by Jesus' own words is translated hill. It, it, it's in the Sermon on the Mount, 514, Matthew 514. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill, that's the same word translated mountain, cannot be hid. I just wanted to make that comment. I think mountains are a better translation. And when they saw him, it, where Jesus had told them to go. They went to exactly, finally. Luke tells us they didn't you know, go Sunday night or the next Sunday, but finally they did what the angel said and what the lady said who told him what Jesus said. Let's tell my brothers uh, to go out well, in fact, it's in the 28th chapter when the women left the tomb suddenly jesus met them greetings he said or hello they came to him and clasped his feet and worshiped him <clears throat> then jesus said do not be afraid go and tell my brothers this is after they all failed him in the garden of gethsemane 
And Peter had denied him. He said, Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And specifically, Jesus let them know there was a mountain. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Notice, Jesus doesn't pay attention. Just, he doesn't reprove them for the doubts. Uh, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Listen, we need to recognize that God wants to work with us to bring revival. Uh, and I, I especially, I call your attention to uh, what one of our senators did. I'm reading on Wednesday, Russell Gall, President Trump's nominee to be Deputy Director of the White House Office of Management and Budget, was visually attacked by this senator. Uh, it's named here uh, over his Christian faith folks but I don't think throughout history this has ever happened this senator Dean Ball unsuitable for office because he believes that salvation is found alone through Jesus Christ that's what Jesus said himself I am the way the truth and the life and the gospels make it clear that only through Jesus can we know God or get to God? He said, I'm quoting from this uh, readout, uh, he said, someone with that kind of religious belief system is, quote, really not someone who this country is supposed to be about. That's wrong. Hmm. S Senator James Blackford warned that the senator's comments dangerously close to crossing a clear constitutional line for how we evaluate qualifications for public service. The First Amendment is crystal clear that the federal government must protect every American's right, peaceful, and free exercise of religion, the Oklahoma Republican said. We cannot say we have the free exercise of religion, but also require people to practice their faith only in a way that the government officials prefer. The Vermont Senator's comments, that tells you where he is, but I'm not <coughs> speaking his name, brought strong condemnation from Christians across the nation, including Family Research Council President Tony Perkins. Uh, this senator is taking the Obama era's religious hostility and putting it on steroids, Perkins said. Uh, Robert Jeffries, I bet him, at Tony's mother's funeral, and Tony, which Tony's preach, Robert Jeffries, and often speaks on Fox uh, as a past, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Dallas. And he said, there are one two choices for this senator. Apologize to the country for his foolhardy attempt to introduce an unconstitutional litmus test that would exclude 41% of the country or reside. The controversy stems from an article Bob wrote in 2016 defending his alma mater, Wheaton College. Very, very good. College. In that article, he described Islam as a deficient theology. There's a fundamental problem, <coughs> he wrote in the resurgence. Muslims do not have simply a de deficient theology. They do not know God because they have rejected Jesus Christ his son. They stand condemned. He wrote that. Senators, oh, uh, the senator confronted during the congressional hearing. The following is a transcript provided by, anyway, I'll not read the transcript, uh, but he got on to this man for believing what Christians <coughs> believe for 2,000 years. 
and trying to attach uh, a, a religious test, you know, to serving uh, in the uh, serving in the uh, or with the president's cabinet. Anyway, folks, I want to tell you, Christianity is under attack. And that, for that reason, I wouldn't listen to ABC, NBC, CBS, or no, read the New York Times or the Washington Post because they don't believe there is a need. The majority believe that there is no God. And then they, they think we're deficient in our theology for promoting the gospel, which I'm going to do this morning. Uh, perhaps the four points of uh, the Wales Revival should be mentioned uh, because I think unless we become one, we're not going to have it. But the four points point the way to oneness. Uh, for us, is there any sin in your past that you have not confessed it by on your knees at once? Your past must be put away and yourself cleansed. Two, is there anything in your life that is doubtful? Anything you cannot decide whether it's good or evil? Away with it. <coughs> there must, must not be a cloud between you and God. Have you forgiven everybody? Everybody? Everybody. If not, don't expect forgiveness for, for your own sins. You won't get it. Third, that's what the scripture says. Third, do what the Spirit prompts you to do. Obedience prompts implicit, unquestioning obedience to the Spirit. And four, public confession of Christ as your Savior. There's a vast difference between profession and confession. Now, those four points are points of the Wales Revival as preached by Evan Roberts, who God used to bring a hundred thousand souls to the Lord in six weeks. And people traveled all over, from all nations, including our U.S., to be a part of this revival. Anyway, I thought. Listen, we've never been under attack like we are today. And you'll forgive me. I decided uh, this, not to read the New York Times nor the Washington Post because of a uh, few others. I think the Chicago Tribune and Los Angeles Times. I, because the folks behind it didn't believe in God, much less Jesus Christ. Uh, folks, I heard Brother Hem say one day when I was uh, talking to him about how to stop this, he said, you'll never be able to stop it, you and I. He, he said, only revival will stop this, stop this avalanche attack. And we, we didn't, we're, we're under attack like we are now. And he, he said, the, the most we can do is like a dog barking at a car. It may make it swerve, but he said only revival will stop this anti-God sentiment that's gaining control of our millennials. 30% of them think this way. They want socialism instead of what our country has stood upon. And Dear Lord, so much else. I guess they want us not to believe the Bible, which we do. We believe Jesus. And let's continue on. When they saw him, that Jesus, and now I want you to know, I, I have a second thought. Unless we're at a point in time, we're not going to see Jesus. When Jesus witnessed Elkhart waiting, I was there. I've never been in a meeting for three days where God's will was always done. Brother Him had a little heart and you pray over testimony, preaching, scripture, uh, and whatever. There's about ten things on that card. Uh, 
And I'm telling you, I went to the first service. I went to the second service. I went to the third service. And I, I had to go to my room to put cold towels on my eyes. I've never been where God's will was done moment by moment. And even in a service. <laughs> well, we're trying to take Christ. We sing the hymns that Jesus wants and the, the, God, the gathering is doing that also. And oh, folks, we need revival and it can only come through the church. Let's read on. When they saw him, they worshiped him but some doubt. Oh, Matthew put that in because it actually happened. But notice Jesus didn't uh, get on to him. He didn't get on to Peter. He said, Satan has desired to sit you and I pray for you. And when you come through, when you get converted in the King James thing, he said, strengthen the brother. Well, that's what Peter did. Then Jesus came to them and said, when they are with the appointed time and the appointed place, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, uh, we will remember that while we're being attacked and it's going to get worse, uh, folks. The, the, the power and the authority has been given to Jesus. Therefore, go, my text says, it doesn't say that. It's a part of simple. Therefore, as you are going, make disciples. That's in the imperative of all nations. Baptizing them. It's a part of simple. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. This is Trinity Sunday. And no wonder the uh, church fathers chose this passage for us on Trinity Sunday. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them, that's the third part of simple, the belief, baptizing, teaching. And then we make disciples by baptizing them in the, and teaching them. Teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. We hold on to Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We make disciples by baptizing them, as Jesus said, in the name of the Father. And that means into, I is the Greek word there, into baptizing the into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Then teaching them to observe all things. That's how we make disciples. I'm preaching every Sunday and have for Texas Christ. Uh, most Sundays, Barry, if you're listening, you're to preach when I'm on vacation the first Sunday, and Tony is to preach the second Sunday. God's servants pray about that. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Then I ask him to pray. And Pastor Terry had a witness on Barry the first Sunday, and Barry's been holding back. Now's the time when I go on vacation. Uh, hallelujah. And Amen. You're the one, and I'll tell him when we get to the strike. Tony is the second one. Boy, to do what Jesus said, not only in the scripture, but to do what Jesus says. Hallelujah. Make, we're disciples when we do what Jesus said. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, I'm all, almost to the 10 mark, and I want to thank you again for all of you listening, before Pastor Terry, I think there was at least 10, maybe 12 plug-ins to listen to what we were saying today. And 
I want to thank you all for praying me through this awful chemo and radiation was so bad. But, and I finished 30 radiation treatments, but I just finished my fourth set uh, of chemo Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Oh, and I'm able to breathe. I'm not, not being interrupted my schedule. And uh, the women folk who got to us or reported me, the women folk who have taken this chemo, throws them in the hospital. But I don't have to go to the hospital. It's severe. And in effect, they put it into our heart through a port. Uh, it goes all over the body. It, and it's the only way you can get rid of it except the supernatural touch of the Holy Spirit of God the Father. And I, I pray for that. Praise the Lord. Jesus, we want to thank you for this text today. I've spent all week just on the first verse, 16th verse. <laughs> they went to the, the mountain did Jesus said go to our hill? We don't have to go to hill country in Texas because there's no Rockies, no Appalachians. But well, whatever you point out, Jesus, we want to be faithful to be there at the right time, meeting the right person, saying the right thing uh, when we're called upon to testify. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And, I thank you, Jesus, for this privilege of being well enough to go speak to Texas Christ today and to speak to the gathering and those in Florida, Indiana, Tennessee, and elsewhere, Michigan, perhaps. Hallelujah. Thank you for, for uh, Jim Woodward, for Woodward, for thinking of this way we can reach other people. Praise the Lord. I, I'm done, and though it is a very uh, feeble attempt to preach on the Great Commission,